welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna, and today I'm going to be talking about books about fairy tales and me tales. Let's get going. So my first book is Princess of the Midnight Ball by Jessica Day George. It's the number one in the Princess of West Fallen trilogy. It is a tale of 12 princesses doomed to dance until dawn. Galen is a young soldier returning from war. Lois is one of 12 princesses condemned to dance each night for the king on the stone. Together, Galen and Lois will search for a way to break the curse that forces the princesses to dance at the midnight balls. It's, all they need is one invisibility cloak, a black wool chain, knit with enchanted silver needs, and that most critical ingredient of all, true love, to conquer the foes in the dark halls below. But Malum and forces are working against them above ground as how well. And as cruel as the king and the stone has seemed, his wrath is mere invitation compared to the evil that awaits Galen and Rose in the brighter world above. My next one is To Bleed the Crystal Blue by Sarah A. Parker. And what a pleading flower to keep locked in the big, rocky tower. Nineteen years ago, I was plucked from the heart of a bloody massacre that spawned nobody else. Small, fragile, and enigma. Now word to a powerful high master who knows too much and says too little. I lead a simple life, never straying from the confines of an imaginary line I have drawn around the castle grounds. Stay within, never leave. Out in the monsters look, inside I'm safe, though at a cost far greener than the blood. I drip into a goblet daily. Toxic, unreciprocated love for a man who is utterly unavailable. My savior, my protector, my almost executioner. I can't help but be enamored with the arcane man who holds the power to pull my roots from the ground. When Ricardia's beast spill across the ladder threatened to flay the fabric of my tailored existence, the petals of reality will peel back to reveal an ugly truth. But in the castle part of secrets, none are greater than the one I have kept for myself. No tower is tall enough to protect me, from the horror that tore my life to shreds. So this is a dark Rapunzel reimagining. My next book is Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. Everyone knows the legend of Arthur destined to be king, of the beautiful Geneva who will betray him with his most loyal knight, Lancelot, of the bitter sorceress Morgana who will turn against them all, but Elaine alone carries the burden of knowing what is to come, for Elaine of Shalot is cursed to see in the future. On the mystical isle of Avalon, Elaine runs free and learns of the ancient prophecies, surrounding her and her friends countless possibilities, almost all of them tragic. When the future comes to claim that Elaine, Geneva, Lancelot, and Morgana accompany Arthur to take his throne, it's definitely Camelot, where magic is outlawed, the rules of society chain them, and enemies are everywhere. Yet the most dangerous threats may come from within their own circle. As visions are fulfilled and inevitable fate closes in, Elaine must decide how far she will go to change fate and what she is willing to sacrifice along the way. As always, this is the Lady of Charlotte reclaims her story in this bold feminist reimagining of the Athenian legend. My next book is A Blade So Black by L. Ellen McKinney. It is the number one book in the Nightmare Verse. The first time the nightmares came, it nearly cost Alice her life. Now she's trained to battle monstrous creatures in the dark dream realm known as Wonderland with magic weapons and hardcore fighting skills. Yet even warriors have a curfew. Life in real world Atlanta isn't always so simple, as Alice juggles an overprotective mom, a high maintenance best friend, and a slipping GPA. Keeping the nightmares at bay is turning into a full-time job. But when Alice, handsome and mysterious mentor, is poisoned, she has to find the antidote by venturing deeper into Wonderland she's, than she's ever gone before. And you will need to use everything she learns in both worlds to keep from losing her head, literally. Like the reimagining of Alice in Wonderland, but with monsters in her world. This book is Wish of the Wicked by Danielle Page. And so this is the fans of Bridget Camilla and Maleficent. For centuries, the enchanted members of the Entente 
and worked in tandem with the three fates, the present, the past, the future, to maintain the state across the thirteen kingdoms. For Queen Margaret learns of her untimely demise from Hecat, fate of the future, Margaret burns Hecat at the stake and decrees death to all intente in order to live forever. But some survive, including sixteen-year-old Pharaoh who hatches a dangerous plan to seek the men. Along the way, she finds herself falling for the one person who can ruin everything. With life and love hanging in the balance, she must decide who to trust and what's most important, living in the past or forging a new future. My next book is The Subtle of Beauty. It is number one in Crowns of the Twelve, and it is by Anne Hunter. A cursed prince, a vain beauty, Glory is the seventh daughter of Dr. Hazard, High King of the Twelve Kingdoms. Glory hopes that of all her sisters she can escape the fate of a loveless marriage, but on the night she plans to elope with the royal falconer, the whole world comes crashing down. Her father announces Glory's before of the Eragon of the Blood Realm, a prince no one has ever seen. The prince is said to be a recluse, cursed and deformed by the gods of for the sins of his power hungry father. Yet when Glory is trapped in Blackthorn Keep, she discovers that not everything is what she expected, an insulting grimfawn, a persistent ghost, and a secret plan to upstart the prince keep glowing reeling. So it is a retelling of the beauty and the beast, and I'm sorry if you hear background noises, I have guests, so what a fun time to film. My next one is A Moon of Roses, the number one in Deliciously Dark Fairy Tales by K.L. Green. So it's a spicy new twist on the old classic Beauty and the Beast. I could save him, but he would ruin me. The beast, the creature, the stalks of the forbidden wood, the dragon prince. He has suffered a fate worse than death. We all have. A curse put upon us by the mad king. We are kingdom locked in mind. Shifters unable to feel our animals. Stuck here by a deal between the late king and the demon who seeks our destruction. The only one keeping this kingdom alive is Nephan, the golden prince to a stolen throne, the last dragon shifter. He is our hope, he is my nightmare. When he catches me trespassing in the forbidden world, he doesn't punish me with that, as he's entitled. He takes me instead, forces me back to the castle as his prisoner, seeks to use me. Apparently, I can save him, I can save the whole forgotten kingdom, locked away by the demon's king power. But it will mean taming the monster beneath his skin. It would mean giving myself to him. It would mean my ruin. My next book is Curse of the Wolf King, number one in Entangled with Fay, and this is by Desonia Odette. A Beauty and the Beast when telling. You see the pattern here? Beauty and the Beast is my favorite. A beastly fay king with a deadly curse, and devious bargain to break it. All Gemma Belfour wants is to leave her past behind and forget the days kind of broke her heart. But when she's captured by a trickster, Faye King, who threatens to hold her for ransom, she will find herself at the top of the gossip column yet again. Unless, plagued by a curse that will soon claim his life, the human hated King Elliot will do anything to save himself. And if Gemma can use that to her advantage, she might be able to bargain her way to freedom. All she has to do is help him from, him, from break his curse. And my next one is What Monster is Gods, and that's by Rosamund Hodge. The book, what, what Monster is Gods, starts with Sleeping Beauty who leaves off, as Leah, a girl chosen by the gods of Lunakia, releases the royal family from 500 years of enchanted sleep and kills the heretic sorcerer who trapped them, only to find that the gods are not as bene benevolent as they appear, and the ghost of the sorcerer she killed may be her only help to protect her life and country. And my last one is A Thieving Curse, the number one book in Mirror World Chronicles by Selena R. Gonzalez. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. She must marry a prince for the good of her kingdom, but the mad cursed with dragon features who saved her life is the wrong prince. Raylene would love a simple life, getting up to mischief with her brother and being valued for herself, not her title. But she's a princess with the weight of a peace treaty on her shoulders. When Maylin gets separated from her family on the way to arrange marriage to the crown prince of the neighboring kingdom, she is saved by a beast. But now he won't let her leave. 
Not only does the monster claim to be Alexander, the rightful crown prince living in hiding, but he refuses to escort her back to her family. Trapped in dangerous mountains with an infuriating, fire breathing dragon man, what really fears the, for the future of her kingdom and the safety of her family. And yet, the kindness of the cursed prince's human friend surprises her. When Alexander reveals the shocking truth of his case, she begins to see the past that much rise exterior to the prince's human heart. But will Rain Raylene have the courage to admit her growing love for a cursed man? And will her family manage to salvage the treaty when they think her dead? And this is a retail of the Beanie and the Beast. Okay, so those are all the books about fairy tales slash retails. Let me know what you're excited about and let me know which one is your favorite fairy tale. Mine is obviously Beauty and the Beast as you can tell and I really do love The Little Mermaid. So that is all I have. Please like, comment, and subscribe so that every time I so that you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!